course. So um, I'm going to add the spices now. Like I said, I'm going to do cayenne and paprika. You can do one or the other or both. They're both just different, like mild red peppers. Um, they both have antioxidant properties. They have carotenoids, which are it's a very powerful plant antioxidant. They also both have capsaicin, which is in pretty much any peppers that you're going to eat. Um, it's what gives them their little bit of spice, but it has like pain relief. It has nausea relief. It's a decongestant. If you have allergies, it reduces inflammation overall, which is huge for chronic illness, including cancer. It also can help reduce headaches. Um, and it has vitamin A, which helps boost your overall immunity. I am a big fan of just eyeballing spices. So um, I think you should just, again, it's like learning that relationship with food and learning to like, okay, I like this. If you're not sure about it, less is more. Just do a little bit. If you love them and you know you love them, put more in. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those real quick. And if you need to, you can add oil as you want, or if you're if you're being more conscious of how much oil you add. Add. You can always just add like a couple tablespoons of water instead. And then the next thing we're going to go ahead and add are the tomatoes. And again, you can use tomato paste or tomato sauce. I just really recommend like checking the jar and being conscious of if there's other things added into it, if there's a lot of salts, if there's sugar, things like that tend to be in like pastes and sauces, so. I'm gonna do about half a can of that. And then the next one I'm gonna add for spices is the cumin, which I, I mentioned earlier, that's what's in a lot of the curries. Um, again, if you don't want it, leave it out, but it does specifically, it's been researched to help delay and prevent mammary tumors in animal studies. And it also has a lot of like health promoting factors. So it helps with hypertension. It can lower your blood pressure. Um, it also helps with gastrointestinal issues and diarrhea, which can be a side effect of treatment. I'm sure some of you are aware of that. Um, and again, it has antioxidant properties. So it's always good for fighting illness. grab my lid here. That's always another way that you can kind of help prevent losing moisture. If you're not as familiar with cooking, I always say like, if you're wanting it to have less moisture, you want to uncover it. If you're wanting it to keep some of that moisture so you don't have to keep adding like water or oil or whatever, then you're going to want to cover it, right? Um, the last one I'm going to put in there is garlic, which like I said, it's an allium vegetable. So it's along with the onions and like chives and things like that. It's one of the key groups of vegetables that's been really shown to help fight cancer. It can specifically suppress the growth of breast cancer cells. It just detoxifies, it boosts your immune function overall. It's also an anti-diabetic. So it's helpful if you're struggling with diabetes, and it can help reduce cardiovascular diseases as well, which can also be common when you're struggling with chronic illness. So if you like a lot yes. of it, put a lot. Yes. Can I ask a question about the, um, the powdered garlic? Sure. Is it, um, how does it compare? Like I'll get, I obviously have powdered, but I also like the, I don't know, they have the pre-chopped big jar of it that you can get at Costco. So right. is the raw better? than the spice. So anytime you process a food, you're going to lose some of the nutritional value. So that's why like, if you can get it fresh, if you can get it just in its whole form, that's going to be the best for it, but you're still going to get the health benefits. 
in like the powdered or the dry. Oh, that's good to know just for ease. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. So that's why I said like, don't, don't put too many barriers. If you're trying to like make a quicker, easier dinner, then don't stress about those things. But yes, if you have the time and the drive, absolutely. The, the more basic and the more down to just the original form, the better, because you're going to get a lot more of that nutritional value intact. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. I will say that also tends to go for a lot of um, food when you cook it. Not all foods because cooking um, in certain methods does make certain compounds more bioavailable. So that can get kind of confusing. But um, oftentimes when you cook, you, you do lose a little bit of the nutritional value. So that's why I like eating a raw salad or eating like the, the slaw that we're going to make, which is going to have like the raw cabbage and the raw carrots, you're going to get even more of that that healthy, like full on impact, right? Okay, so that's gonna cook up a little bit more. I'm gonna turn it down just cause I'm talking and it's cooking too fast. No, <laughs> um, I'm gonna add a little bit of the chili pepper which has a lot of the same benefits as like the paprika and the cayenne. Um, again, if you wanna do like green chili or jalapeno or serrano, or if you want to get crazy and throw ghost pepper in there, whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. And so the last thing I'm gonna add is the sauces. And I'm gonna do the liquid aminos and the barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce, again, is just something to kind of be mindful of. And when you go and pick it, sit there and compare labels, right? Cause they put a lot of sweeteners and a lot of salt oftentimes into barbecue sauces, but you can find healthier options. And I will say another kind of cheat for that is uh, if you can help, if you, if you can, a lot of times money can be a barrier here, but if you can shop at health food stores like Sprouts or Whole Foods for certain things like this, um, they have limits on what they can sell in order to still be classified a health food store, right? So that's why they don't carry a lot of the same products that you might find at like Smith's or Albertsons because they have requirements for like what can be in their products. So a lot of times you're gonna find less of like the additives that are not really real ingredients. Um, and if you're not in the habit of reading ingredients, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you get in that habit. Again, it's just that awareness of what you're putting into your body. If you cannot pronounce half the ingredients, I would not buy that product. So it should be, you know, the fewer ingredients and the majority of them should be things that you recognize that's gonna be healthier for you than if half of it is like, you know, anti-caking agent and dye number, whatever. And a lot of those have health issues related to them. And they're just put in there because they're cheap, quite frankly. So even though it's more expensive, again, if it's an investment you can make, um, especially if it's something that you know, like is already going to have sweeteners in it, but you're probably going to get higher quality sweeteners that aren't as bad for your health. If you get like the healthier version, then I would recommend doing that. Um, and if you're not sure, if you're like, hey, maybe this is exactly like what I buy at the traditional store and this is, you know, take a picture of it, don't buy it, but then go compare it the next time you're shopping. Um, that does take time, but you can also look it up online if you have internet access, which I'm assuming most of us do since we're on here. So um, I'm not going to add too much of this. I'm going to add a little bit for the flavor. I'm going to add a little bit of this, and then I'm going to add some water just to get the moisture in there right. And again, kind of go based off of like what the texture you want. If you want it super juicy, add more.
I'm just going to show you what this is looking like so you can kind of see here. That's actually about the, the moisture level I like. Some people like it a lot juicier than that, and that's awesome. Or if you want it more firm, you can definitely let that cook out or not add as much of the sauce. Um, again, just kind of play around, like enjoy that. All right, I'm gonna turn that way down to low so we can get started on our slaw, which is the next thing I'm gonna make to put on top of it. I'm excited about the slaw because if you did my last cooking thing, you know that I love purple cabbage. <laughs> um, it is amazing. It is a cruciferous veggie, which is the other group of veggies that is really potent in beating cancer and helping fight chronic illness. Um, that's gonna be things like broccoli, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, all your cabbages, kale, um, a lot of the heartier greens. And cabbage specifically is a really good source of fiber. Um, it's got vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, a few different B vitamins in there. It's very, it's very high in antioxidant properties. It also has potassium, manganese, iron, and magnesium. So a lot of your trace elements in there that you need. Uh, it's low in saturated fat and cholesterol, which is something that's good overall. It's got anti-inflammatory properties. It improves your immune system. It also is good for like cleansing your bowels, which is really important when you're fighting illness. So half the battle is what you put into your body. And the other half is like getting the toxins out, right? Which that's why fiber is so huge because fiber is how we move all of that out. It's how we get everything out of our body that we don't want. And anything that's gonna help cleanse your bowels and help promote positive bacteria in your gut is really important for getting all those bad things out of your body. The extract of purple cabbage actually has been shown to induce cell death in human breast cancer cells. And also it's been shown to help in weight loss and detoxification. So all of those are great. Again, kind of along the lines of it cleansing your bowels, it just overall improves digestion, which can also be something that like when you're going through treatment, digestion can be difficult and it can be impacted by, you know, different medications you're on. Obviously nausea is a big concern here. Let me do this so you can see. So I'm going to finally chop this again. You can do this to your liking, however you want to eat this. I do say that if, if it's something you're not sure about, like if it's a flavor thing that you're not as into it, the finer you chop it, the easier it is to eat it, right? Because then you're not eating like a giant chunk of it. And that's how I often sneak <laughs> like veggies into my son's food is I just really finely dice it. Going back to like the pasta salad idea, right? He does not like celery or bell pepper, but if I make it really tiny and I put it in his pasta salad, he eats it. So, so I'm just going to keep dicing this up until it's a good small little chunk. You can also shred it or you can buy shredded cabbage. Um, if you don't, if you want to save yourself the prep time again, right, you can buy a shredded cabbage or a shredded cabbage mix. Um, I like purple cabbage for multiple reasons. I'm big on color. One, because there's a lot of correlation between how much color is in your food and how much health you like healthy micronutrients and vitamins that you get, because that's what causes those colors. A lot of those phytonutrients in plants that fight illness and that promote health are what give plants the beautiful colors they have. But also because we're very visual creatures, right? And when we want to eat something, we want to eat something that's pretty and that looks good. So I always try to incorporate more colors into my food. I'm just going to add this to a big mixing bowl. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is add some carrots, which also again have carotenoids where they're very good for fighting cancer. They're good for your eye health. You just get a lot of benefits from them. And I am going to, again, finally chop those. I've already washed all these veggies, but I do want to say that please always, always, always wash your veggies unless they say that they are 
pre-washed or like triple washed in the case of greens, it's always good to wash them. And with root veggies, it's always good to use a brush to scrub them and just get off, you know, any bits of dirt or anything that might still be left on it. Um, if you can afford it, buying organic is helpful just because again, when we look at today's world and the way our food is made, we're dealing with a lot of environmental toxins and many of those are linked to cancer and other chronic illnesses and definitely to having like immune disruption, I'm sorry, immune system disruptions. So a lot of autoimmune disorders that we see coming out today and becoming more common um, are related to a lot of those environmental toxins. And when it comes to organic produce, you're gonna get fewer of those. I have, I don't know if I previously talked about like there's the, the dirty dozen quote unquote and the clean 15. Um, and I can, I can send out a handout, but you can also just look that up. And it kind of tells you if you're trying to be more budget friendly, the dirty dozen are the 12 like fruits and veggies that are kind of the most important to buy organic because they have the highest levels of those toxins. Whereas the clean 15 are the ones that have the lowest level when you're looking at like a non-organic version. And so those are the ones that if you're trying to save the money, it's, it's not as big of a deal if you don't buy them organic. But again, don't let that be a barrier. If you're like, I can't afford organic, still buy it. Just wash them really well. You can always like, especially on greens, you can fill the sink and use some lemon juice or some apple cider vinegar or even white vinegar um, to rinse those, or I'm sorry, to wash those. And then just make sure you rinse them really well to get like the vinegar off so you don't have that flavor necessarily. But that's a good way to help clean them, especially if you're not buying organic. I do wanna pause again and just open it up if anybody has any questions while I'm dicing this or comments. Doing okay so far? Right. Let me go stir this real quick. So just a couple other things I wanted to talk about. Um, we did talk a little bit about inflammation and I'm just gonna say it's, it's linked to all three stages of tumor development. So the initiation, right, when it first starts to grow, the promotion, when it really starts to enlarge and become an issue, and then the progression of tumors and of the disease. So inflammation is really key. And that's why when we're eating these whole plant-based foods, we're actively fighting that inflammation. And we're taking into our bodies all of the things that we need to fight inflammation. And inflammation is linked to everything from allergies to like chronic immune system issues, to hypertension, to cardiovascular health, to how your skin is, right? Like things like acne and psoriasis and eczema, which I don't know if you noticed, but I have psoriasis. So that is actually partly what got me onto my own health journey. Um, and it really helps when we are actively taking in all these things that are going to fight that. Whereas if we're eating things like high sugar, high processed foods, lots of saturated fats, um, lots of animal foods that have a lot of like so another, another thing about animal foods, right? They tend to have higher saturated fat. They tend to have higher cholesterol. And those are things that are linked to more inflammation in the body. So just something to think about, like we're really trying to work on reducing all of those things and increasing the positive things that fight that so that we can get the inflammation under, check, under control and into check. I'm going to use lemon in this. Um, if you don't like lemon, you can use lime or you can use vinegar, like apple cider vinegar, or um, you can completely leave it out if you don't want it to be as tangy. 
but I'm going to go ahead and squeeze like half of a lemon into here. All right. Okay. And then I am going to use a little bit of celery salt, which is just basically salt with celery seed. Um, I don't want to overdo it, but it gives it just a little bit of a kick. And then I do salt and pepper to taste. Let me get my. So again, um, I'm going to use, this is Himalayan pink sea salt. Um, it's already ground up, but I much prefer sea salt to table salt. And then I'm also going to use a peppercorn medley and I'm just going to crack some pepper in there. I'm a huge fan of pepper. It's got a lot of health benefits as well. Um, but if you don't like it, then leave it out. So that's that. And then I like to add greens to everything <laughs> if I can, right? Again, how many veggies can we get in there? So um, let me check. I'm going to add some chives, which are another allium vegetable. So again, you're getting all of that cancer fighting positive health promoting energy and you can go all the way down these are really cool too so like a lot of people know this but if you don't um you can cut here and you can regrow them and you can regrow them several times until they kind of get nasty but just like set them in a jar with a little bit of water that just goes like above the roots and then it's kind of like you get more bang for your buck my son likes to do that on the table we just kind of have it as a centerpiece sometimes like instead of flowers so These are super cheap. That's like one of my favorite things about allium vegetables too, is that onions, chives, they tend to be pretty cheap and they've got amazing healing potential. So they're also something you can juice and add to juices. But again, if you can eat them fresh and get all the fiber, it's great. And you can throw them in anything, salads, stir fries, coleslaw, whatever, so. All right, so that's kind of where we're looking there. And then I like to add some kind of an herb. Um, I'm gonna do Italian parsley this time, but you can do like cilantro if you prefer, you can do um, oregano and it doesn't have to be fresh, but again, I do like the fresh if you can do it. And you can use all of this. So you use all the way down to the stems. So if texture is an issue for you, um, again, just really finely dice it so that you're not tasting big chunks of it. And then the texture is not gonna be as much of an issue for you. So. so I also wanted to kind of go back to, we were talking about iron before. Um, like I mentioned, the, the heme iron that you get in animal foods, right? It's linked to oxidative stress, which is very big uh, when you're talking about chronic illness and cancer. It causes DNA damage and it promotes tumor development. Whereas non-heme iron, which is what you're getting from veggies and plants, that again, your body can help regulate it and it does not have any of those negative health effects. So it's just something that, yes, it's important to have iron in our diet, but also where we're getting it is important. Just like when it comes to the protein, right? So I'm gonna mix that in there. Same with sugar, like we talked about. If you're eating sugar in the form of like a whole fruit, like the jackfruit that we're using, you're not getting all of the issues that you get when you're adding processed sugars. I will say, um, and again, there are different opinions on this in nutrition, but I will say that I have seen honey and agave nectar to have less of the negative health effects in a lot of studies. And honey especially has some positive like anti-inflammatory properties. So those are the sweeteners that I opt for if I'm going to use a sweetener. Not always, right? Like again, there's times that you're gonna use brown sugar or sugar, 
but those are you know just some options maple syrup also has some interesting health benefits which is like i don't have enough time to talk about all of that today but it's just something to keep in mind as another option all right this is so this is obviously not the healthiest thing right but it is a plant-based version of mayo and because of so one issue with mayo right is it's made with eggs which are very high in cholesterol this is cholesterol free so it's it's also preservative free um so it is a healthier version of mayo and ironically i don't actually like mayo but i love the flavor of this um so i'm just going to do a couple scoops of this to give it the creaminess that we're looking for there And then the other thing I like to add in here is some kind of mustard and you can use whatever mustard you have. Like if you like spicy brown mustard or if you like honey mustard, I'm going to use a honey Dijon mustard. Um, again, this is one of those things that it's going to have sweeteners in it, right? It's going to have some other not as healthy ingredients. So I do recommend like looking at different options and buying something that is going to be maybe a healthier version. I'm just going to do a little bit of that in there. You can also, if you don't want to use like a mustard like this, but you still want that flavor, you can use mustard powder and just kind of mix it up in here instead of using the mustard sauce. That's, that's another way to just avoid all of the like sweeteners and additives altogether. So you're going to mix that up. And that is your slaw. And I actually really like this even by itself. Um, if I'm making it to eat by itself, I do tend to make it a little more sweet and a little less tangy. So I might leave out like the lemon or lime or vinegar, depending on what you used, but it's also flavor preference. All right, so there's that. And that is pretty much it for our prep as far as the food. I'm gonna pop this back up. Let's see, put this over here. Turn off the heat there. I'm gonna go ahead and plate this. Um, so obviously we're making a sloppy joe and it's gonna be on bread. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about grains and especially processed grains. So I I am not in the nutritional camp that doesn't believe in eating carbs. Again, I think there's a difference between complex and simple carbs. And I also think that overall, there's a lot more that says that um, animal-based foods and eating too many calories is a much bigger issue than eating carbs like bread and pasta. And especially if you're reducing those high energy density foods like meat and dairy, then adding more carbs to your diet is actually not harmful and it's going to help fill you up. You need carbs. <laughs> um, but being mindful of what carbs you're using are, it, that's still important, right? So that's still something you want to think about. Um, so there are sprouted breads that have some really good health benefits to them. Um, if you can buy like locally made breads, if you go to like the growers market, or if you go to a local bakehouse, you're going to get a lot fresher bread and therefore it's just going to have a lot fewer additives. It's not going to have nearly as many like <laughs> things that you cannot pronounce that are really not good for your health in them. But even that being said, when you go to the grocery store, just read the ingredients and find something that's going to work for you. Um, I do like these, the, this, this brand is Dave's killer bread. And it is still a store-bought bread. Um, I do put it in the fridge so it lasts longer, but you don't have to. But like, they're really high in the whole grains. And that's what you really want to look at, right? You want to look at whole grains. Because when you're eating the processed grains that have been separated from what's called the bran, that's the outer side, that's the brown part of the grain or the darker part of the grain, you're not getting the fiber you're not getting nearly as many of the nutrients. It's kind of um, ironically, like when you peel an apple, the majority of the nutrients are in the peel. So apples are still great for you. Don't think you don't wanna eat the inside, but eating with the peel is a lot better, right? So it's the same with grains. Um, whereas when you remove that, 
it kind of shocks your system and it hits your system more like sugar. I, I do see the comment in the chat and I will talk more. Did you have that there before I talked about honey or? I'm not sure who. Mershona? Okay, I'm gonna go back to that. So I'll talk more about honey in a little bit, but, um, but just something to kind of think about that if you can get it where it's still intact or it's the whole grain, that's what's important. And just because it says wheat does not mean it's whole wheat. You really want to say whole wheat. And again, just because it says it on the, on the cover. So fun fact, we do not regulate any part of this packaging. The only thing we regulate is the nutrition facts. That's why I say always look at the ingredients because they can say all the things they want on this. That's why like cereal, which is one of the most processed, often kind of worthless, <laughs> um foods right it still will say like heart healthy and all this other stuff but then like when you read what's actually in it you're like oh this is not really anything that's great for me um that's not to say there aren't healthier cereals out there but it's just you know again you can say a lot of things on the front of a package and we don't have a market that really regulates that so what you want to look at are the nutritional facts and if it doesn't say whole wheat and it just says wheat then you're not getting the whole grain that you want, right? So that's just something to think about. Um, and this, this one, it has protein. It doesn't have a lot of the other like additives. So it's just, it's what I like as far as burger buns, but to eat your own and don't stress about it again. If you're like not there yet and that's not a step you're ready to take, then just focus on, okay, you already made a healthy choice by substituting the pulled pork for something that's much fewer calories and a lot more health benefits and still gives you that texture and you're adding all of these like raw fresh veggies by having that slaw. So don't stress it, but it's just something to think about. Um, I did touch on honey a little bit. Um, I will say again, it's something that nutritionists don't agree on. Some really say that like all of the sweeteners are bad and you should just avoid them all. I am not of that camp. I think that I have seen studies that to me show that there are health benefits of honey, um, especially the anti-inflammatory properties. And if you have allergies, it helps with that. But that being said, the best thing you can do is buy it locally. Buy it locally. And if you can buy it raw, just again, like the less processed, the closer to home, the more health benefits you get. That goes for even like local produce. This is something else to just kind of keep in mind if it's accessible to you and if it's a step you're ready to take. If you can buy local produce, you're gonna get higher levels of a lot of those like vitamins and micronutrients and things like that because the food is picked closer to when it's actually ripe. It doesn't have to travel nearly as far, right? So they don't like, if you're getting food that's coming from far away, obviously they have to pick it way before it's ripe. Otherwise it would be rotten by the time it got to you. And so because of that, it's not like fully developed and in its best state for you to eat. And so like the closer to home, the less it has to travel. Plus it's just, I mean, it's, it's also nice to know like where you're getting it again, that like conscious idea of how involved do you want to be in your food? Food is a very intimate thing. So to me, I think if, if you're able to do that, it's great. So local honey, raw honey, that's what I would recommend. I still wouldn't like OD on it, but um, it is something that's, I think better than a lot of the other sweeteners out there. And then, like I said, um, agave is another one. Agave is from a plant. Uh, stevia is another one I'll throw out there that there's not as much research on, but it's been used in Africa for a very long time. It comes from a plant. It's like a, it's a pretty unprocessed version of a sweetener. Um, and always, 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 I recommend, even if it's cane sugar, I recommend an actual plant-based sugar, right? Like even cane sugar is a plant-based sugar as opposed to the artificial, artificial sweeteners, excuse me, because a lot of the artificial sweeteners are really questionable in the science. And um, there's a lot of science that does say it's, it's not healthy for you and that it might even have like excitotoxin properties, which means it's bad for your brain cells. <laughs> so it's just, 
I always say like, even if you're going to do sugar, I would, I would do the real sugar over like the zero sugar, but it has 12 artificial sweeteners or two artificial sweeteners or one artificial sweetener that you can't pronounce and you don't really know what it is. Right. So just something to think about. Did I have any other questions? I don't see any other in the chat, but I'm going to plate this up so you guys can see it. So this is what it's going to look like. And then you have yourself a sloppy joe. And I'm gonna to totally eat that once we're done. <laughs> I was gonna also do a salad, but I didn't wanna rush it. I wanted to have enough time for everyone to be, you know, able to answer, or I'm sorry, ask questions and have their input. So we still have about 30 minutes left. Is there, are there any specific topics you guys want me to go into? Are there any questions that you have? Any questions about the cooking or about things I said? So you were saying that this is a recipe that you feed your son. So it must, it must not be, or unless he's just a, a spicy eater, it must not be too, too spicy. Um, I definitely tone down the spice when he's eating it. Although he does okay. eat spicy stuff, I will say. Um, but okay. when I'm making it just for my fiance, I make it way spicier. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Cause I have yeah. one kid who likes spicy and another one who does not. Yeah. And you can also, so like, as far as the spices, that's another thing that's great. So Growing up, right, my dad and I like spices. My mom and my brother did not. So you can always add the spices at the end. You can always oh, make it. True. Yeah, so you can always make it and leave the spices out and then just spice like the portion that you want to spice. Um, I do that a lot of times like with green chili because my son is not a green chili fanatic, but I am, so. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or thoughts? I was just going to ask about um, recipe ideas. Like, where do you sure, sure. look to find them or suggest we, we look for places to find ways to add extra vegetables to our meals? Or if you're picky like me, how do I sneak them in? If, you, if you're feeding a two-year-old, which is basically me. Yeah, okay, <laughs> definitely, yes. I love that. I have a, I have a one-year-old and a seven-year-old, so I totally get this. Um, so I definitely look online and I will just sometimes come up with like one idea. And instead of looking at just one recipe, I'll look at like three or four versions of recipes for that. Um, and you can pretty much any recipe you can think of, if you want a plant-based option, you can always just look for vegan, whatever. Right. So like vegan pulled pork sandwich, and you're going to get a recipe that's similar to like this, but it might not be jackfruit. It might be like soy or something, you know? Um, so I definitely Google a lot, but I can also send out a list to Allison, um, with like specific sites that I really like, if that's helpful. Uh, I know there are also a couple different apps and you can even put in like your dietary limitations. If you're like, I don't, you know, I don't want dairy or I don't want gluten or whatever. Um, yeah, Allison, I saw your hand up. Yes, yeah, sorry. I didn't want to interrupt, but since you brought up soy, um, yes. For those of us that are estrogen receptor positive with our breast cancer, mm -hmm. it's always kind of a hot topic, like yes. avoid it, don't avoid it. Where do we go with that? And I, you know, since 85% of breast cancers are estrogen receptor positive, I was hoping you could kind of delve a little further into soy. Definitely. And I have an amazing video. Um, so there's this website that is super user-friendly. If you just have like an interesting nutrition question and you're like, what does the science say? Um, it's nutritionfacts.org. And I will send you the link to the actual video I'm talking about that specifically goes into soy and kind of debunks the concern over soy when it comes to that. So uh, long story short, and in very simple terms, um, we used to not understand the difference between plant estrogen and animal estrogen, and it is very different. So um, basically, animal-based estrogen turns on those genes. It promotes that growth of cancer, whereas plant-based estrogen actually does the opposite. So not only does it not promote cancer, but it actually has been shown to reduce cancer. And soy intake is actually correlated with reduced risk for cancer. So just as kind of a like at ease 
Um, a lot of that concern, again, just like with protein, when we first started researching nutrition, we did not understand the complexities. And so there was a lot of misconception because we kind of just lumped all of it into one. Um, but it's very different. So there, there is a lot of the, the research that says that soy is linked to cancer is outdated. And it was just the assumption that because it has those estrogens in there, um, that it was going to promote cancer growth. And it does not, like I said, it's literally increased soy intake is correlated with reduced risk for breast cancer. And kind of interestingly enough, uh, dairy is the opposite. So this is like a scary fact, but I do like to share it. Um, they actually believe now that up to 37% of breast cancer cases may be due to exposure to BLV, which is bovine leukemia virus, which is found in milk, um, which to me is scary because for a very long time, especially women who are battling cancer were told to up their intake of dairy to get more calcium. And calcium is definitely important, absolutely, but you can get calcium from plants and you can avoid that exposure to the BLV and also to like some of the saturated fats and other issues with dairy foods that are linked to promotion of cancer and also promotion of osteoporosis. That's another thing that was kind of debunked for a while. You know, we were told like, oh, you need to drink milk, right? Because it strengthens your bones and then you won't get osteoporosis. Well, now we have enough research that actually says, no, the higher intake of milk, actually the higher incidence of osteoporosis, because part of what happens when you have a high intake of dairy is it's very acidic in your system and your body literally leaches calcium from your bones to help combat that acidity and the inflammation that comes from that. Um, and that's another big thing, right? We've, we've talked about inflammation a lot. So dairy really promotes that inflammation, whereas soy and other plants that also have like the protein and the calcium and things like that, that you want to get that are often seen as like, oh, this is why I should eat dairy. Um, you can get those from the plants without having that negative acidic inflammatory response. Um, miso. Yes. Okay. So I'm so glad you brought up fermented food. Oh, I'm very excited. I wasn't going to go into this, but you brought it up. So absolutely. Uh, so yes, miso is definitely included in that. Miso is amazing. If you can get good quality miso, which I would recommend doing a quick little research online. Um, <laughs> Because if you buy miso here in our stores, um, we, we, uh, we unfortunately, we pasteurize all of our food here, which there are reasons for that. Um, but it does tend to kill a lot of the positives of fermented foods. So it's, it's a little bit better if you can buy it from a, like a reputable source that is going to be unpasteurized. But um, I can go into that more at a later time or like maybe send Allison some information on that. Um, but fermented foods are great. They are great for multiple reasons. But the big one is that they help rebuild the positive bacteria in your gut, which like I was talking about with elimination is so important when you're fighting chronic illness. And a lot of times what we've been doing to our bodies for a long time, whether that's eating unhealthy or if we're drinking or if we're loading up on sweets or if we're smoking or if we're whatever we're doing, right? Even if it's just like from the environment toxins that we're absorbing, it really overloads our system and we often don't do enough to help get that out. And so fermented foods help build back the positive bacteria in your gut. Um, that being said, it's also linked to our taste buds. So this is really interesting, but we're starting to understand like the gut brain connection more and how important that is and that the bacteria in your gut literally changes what you crave. It changes how you receive foods. Um, and then of course it changes like how you digest and how you eliminate all of the waste. And so, you know, incorporating fermented foods in your diet is so great. And there are options. There's like kimchi, there's, yeah, miso is a good one. Um, I see a couple more comments, sorry. Uh, okay, so 
kombucha, sorry, I just want to also say kombucha is a good one. And you can ferment foods at home. Um, it, it's something that maybe, Allison, if there's interest in that, I could do like a specific thing on that. Um, I wouldn't be able to do necessarily like a demo because it takes longer time than that, but I could talk more about, about fermented foods. Um, but let me touch on the other couple. So coffee. So coffee is a very interesting topic. Um, really, there's not a lot of evidence that says coffee is bad for you if you're not, if you're drinking it without all the other stuff in it, right? Um, that being said, people have different body chemistry. And so I would also go off of how it makes you feel because some people caffeine has no impact on them in a negative sense, right? Like it doesn't make them jittery. It doesn't make them anxious. It doesn't make their skin inflamed. Whereas other people have those effects. So I think that's more of a person by person basis, but I would, I would say that if you are going to drink coffee, then I would not add sugar and I would not add all the creamers. Cause that's kind of what the main health concern is. If you're drinking a lot of coffee, um, you can do like honey. Um, you can also do, and I know this might sound weird, but it's been shown to be good for like your brain health. It's, it's actually been researched in regards to like Alzheimer. You can actually add a scoop or two of coconut oil in your coffee and it kind of sweetens it. Um, it is definitely a different taste. So you're gonna have to decide. I do like that your... now. Oh, cool. Awesome. I do yeah. that now. I, I stopped the creamer and I do the coconut. It's so good. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. And there are, are non-dairy options, options for creamers. For creamers. Um, I have a um, what about plant-based um, coffee creamers? Yeah. So like I was yeah. saying, yeah, so like there's a lot yeah, options, options out there. Out there. I think someone, I think someone, I can hear an echo. Hear someone, an echo. someone themselves. I don't know who it's. Oh, okay. It's gone now. Okay. Um, so I would just, again, read ingredients, right? Read ingredients because there's also a big market out there for health food options now, and you might be getting something that has a ton of other stuff in it. I would still say that if, if you're taking baby steps, I would still get a plant-based creamer over a dairy-based creamer. Absolutely. Um, and again, go in and look, look at the two difference, go side by side to a store and look at them. Um, but regardless, you're cutting out the dairy, which is helpful. I just want to touch on, someone said, is soy milk better than almond milk? So, okay. Alternative milks are great for a lot of reasons, but again, with that, like read the ingredients because you can sometimes have additives in there that are not good. So again, I would look for something that has simpler ingredients and almond milk is actually super easy to make at home. It's something that um, I could also do a demonstration on, uh, but literally all you need to do is get almonds, soak them in water overnight, um, rinse them, and then blend them up with water and use like a cheesecloth to strain them. Uh, and then you can sweeten it if you want with like a little bit of maple and a little bit of vanilla. But I, I don't really think that it's necessarily is soy better than almond. I think it's a find what you like that you're going to drink. That's better for you than drinking milk all the time. Um, or that you can use in recipes easily and then go from there. And again, it's like more of a case by case basis when it comes to like brands, because some brands have a ton of stuff added in and others don't. And I always, always say opt for the unsweetened. So like I tend to buy the unsweetened almond milk um, because my son likes the almond milk better than the soy milk. And also because he eats a lot of like tofu and soy based meat alternatives. So I just think the more diversity in your diet, the better. So again, that's more of like a personal person by person basis. Allison, yeah, I see your hand up. Yes, hi. So you did touch on some of it. I wanted to kind of delve into some of the um, nut-based milk and those kinds of cashew cheeses, you know, those sort of things. And are they better for us? And then I also wondered if you could touch on uh, calcium supplements because you had talked about the importance of calcium, but maybe not getting it from traditional cow-based milk sources. If let's say soy milk isn't your thing, would you benefit from taking a calcium supplement? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so again, it's not an easy like yes or no answer when it comes to the substitutes, right? Because it really depends on what one you're talking about. Just like how you can go and get like a burger that is made in the healthiest way possible from like grass-fed beef and it's, you know, cooked in healthy oil and all of those things um, versus like going to McDonald's. Not to, not to always default to McDonald's. They get so much bad rep, but I mean, they kind of deserve it. So, but that's, you know, it's sort of the same with alternatives. There are some alternatives that are total crap. Um, that being said, there are some alternatives and unfortunately they do tend to be the more expensive ones are a lot better. But again, it's kind of like you get what you pay for. So read the ingredients, always, always, always read the ingredients and don't think of those as your, as your like, like, I don't want you to start thinking, oh, I'm going to eat plant-based and only eat meat and dairy substitutes, right? Because those are still processed foods. And so that's very important to keep in mind. That being said, do I think they are a step up in most cases from meat and dairy? Yes, I do. I don't think that that's necessarily always the case, but I think most of the time it is. And I think it's more of a baby step to like, okay, I'm trying to reduce my processed food intake. I'm trying to reduce my, my unhealthy food intake and increase my healthy food intake and having some of those easy, like go to, you know, like they have vegan cheese sticks and they have vegan shredded cheese and they have the, anything that you get right now that's meat or dairy, they have substitutes for. So it's, it's nice to have those, but I don't want that to be what your entire meal is composed of. I want that to be more of like, you're adding a little bit of that to get flavor or for comfort food or, you know, to get a, a specific like taste, bud desire uh, out of the way, as opposed to like, I'm just going to eat that all the time because it is still processed food and you are still going to get other additives, sweeteners, salt, things like that, that you don't want as much of. Um, does that answer that a little bit, Allison? Yes, for sure. And, and then, then I'll, but I, the I, don't, I was going to say, yeah, and then the supplements. So thank you. Yes. So I definitely think that I, I am pro supplements. I, again, there are there's kind of a argument with nutritionists on this. Um, some are like supplements are crap. Don't ever take them. Other people are like, oh my God, they're amazing. And they're the next cure all. So I'm kind of in the middle. I think it is better if you can to get everything again. Like if we could all eat whole plant-based raw food, it would be incredible, but that's also just not like achievable and reasonable for the majority of people. So that being said, I absolutely think they're helpful, especially if that's something that you know you're lacking in. I actually take calcium supplements right now. I'm still breastfeeding. And that was something that um, my doctor who uh, is, I go to a doctor that's a little more like holistic. And that was something he recommended while I was breastfeeding because I could tell like I was starting to get leg cramps and stuff because my daughter is just taking all of it. Um, and I actually eat a lot of like calcium fortified dairy alternatives and stuff like that. And I eat a lot of leafy greens that have calcium, like kale and stuff like that, but I still could feel my body needing it. So I definitely think that that is an easy way to get more into your diet. If you need to, um, I would talk to somebody like talk to whoever your nutritionist is or your doctor, right? Cause I am, I am not a doctor. So always talk to your doctor, always talk to your nutritionist about that and ask about like, you know, is there a specific form of calcium that's going to be better for you? Is there a specific like combination of calcium with something else? You know, that's always something to think about. Um, and another thing to think about is when you're eating plant-based calcium, one, one thing that kind of makes it easier for your body to absorb. So like if you're getting it from kale or greens is if you add citrus, so you're getting the vitamin C, um, then you're more able to absorb that. So like, that's why putting like lemon on your salad or, uh, drinking a little bit of orange juice, like that actually helps you absorb calcium from plant-based, uh, I, I want to say products, but from plant-based foods, um, that helps your body absorb it more easily. 
Okay. And then I saw, yeah, mushrooms. Oh, mushrooms are like a whole thing in and of themselves. They're amazing. The last cooking demo I did, we did mushroom tacos. Um, I did not like mushrooms forever. And then I figured out how to cook them in ways that I love them. So they have tons of health benefits. I wish that we had easy access to more mushroom options because like, especially in like Asian cuisine and Asian cultures, they have all these different kinds of mushrooms. And there are so many kinds that have so many different health benefits. That being said, you can shop at Talon Market and they have more options. And also if you go to the growers market, we have a couple local guys that are awesome that grow a bunch of different mushrooms. Um, I, I, I'm not in a place where I can really go and tell you like all the details right now about them, but they have a ton of health benefits. They are really good for you. Yes. Was there like a specific question you had about them or Shona or just, just in general? They're also a really great meat alternative. I will say that like te texturally, they're really great for a lot of things. You can, you know, portobellas and they have all different kinds. So you, if you like the baby ones or if you like the firmer ones, they're great in like, if you're gonna make like vegan pho, if you're gonna make like a portobello grilled sandwich, if you're gonna make like the shredded tacos we did last time, so. I was, I was thinking of like, I've been taking some mushroom supplements. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I read that, and I and also cooking with them, but I read that turkey tail and some specific, I think shiitake too are really good for cancer. Yes, they are, yes. They have a lot of, yeah, they have a lot of phytonutrients in them that are really good for preventing oxidative stress. They're, you know, anti-inflammatory. Um, yeah, they, they are really beneficial. They have a lot of mushroom teas too um, that have different killing properties. Tea is another really great thing to get into if you're not into it. If you're into herbs, there are all kinds of herbal teas that have really good beneficial properties. Um, and if you're not as into eating certain things, then you can make tea with them and you can always you know, add something that you like, like lavender or something in there to kind of round out the flavor, or you can add lemon, or you can add a little bit of honey, or you can add, you know, almond milk or something like that. So do I have one more, I felt like there was one more question. Did anybody else ask anything or was there something I didn't talk about Allison that you had brought up? No, I think you touched base on all of them, um, all of my questions, but I did sort of want to reiterate that I appreciated that you mentioned checking with your medical team. Um, oh, I and I, I just always want to reiterate that all of the information we put out here is as fact-based as we can find it. But first and foremost, your medical team understands your health needs. So please always go there first. Definitely. Yes. And I have to put my little disclosure out there. Like I am not a medical doctor. I cannot diagnose or cure anything. So, you know, all the information I provide is based on my training and research I have been exposed to and found. Um, and I always try to keep it as factual as possible. Um, but that being said, yes, always check with your doctor, your nutritionist, your medical team. Don't make any like drastic, crazy changes in your diet without doing that, please. Um, yeah. Can I comment on that? Because I find it... Um... Um, my experience so far has been with, uh, you know, the doctors that they really don't know about plant-based and nutrition and, um, you know, one person recommended that I drink more milk or, or dairy products because of a calcium issue. And I don't know if no, anybody knows, you know, in town, good integrative, direction to go to get this other piece that you're providing knowing that you're not a doctor but um it just seems like it's a big missing piece in this whole cancer puzzle i completely agree with you um and i do i do think that gets really frustrating and that's a common issue um that being said i do think there are providers out there 
especially providers that are more up to date that have had exposure to this information. Um, I will say I was working at UNM hospitals previously, and I specifically worked with some doctors there that were very informed on this, um, but I understand that's not the norm. There's also a plant-based nutrition uh, program at the New Mexico, uh, the NMSU, so New Mexico State University, and they have some information on their website. Um, UNM has some information on their website. So, so what I would say to that is a couple things. One, um, you can always seek a, a second opinion if you feel like the information you're getting is, is not up to date, um, but also you can do your own research. But when I say that, I, I caution highly because I don't mean like go to Google and you know go to WebMD, that's not what I mean but go to reputable sources. So go to, you know, there are so many universities out there that have specific information on this. Um, I, like I said, that nutritionfacts.org is ran by a medical doctor who is very informed on plant-based nutrition. That is what he does. Um, there are several medical doctors out there that do that. And, and nutritionfacts.org is not a fun, like it's not a it is not a site where you go and buy stuff. And so that's why I love it because his literally it is free, it's open, and it's just like videos and information that is based on up-to-date research. And it looks at all of the nutritional questions you might have. Um, so I know that's hard to find. I say when in doubt, always try to find multiple reputable sources. And again, when working with providers, just keep in mind that you can always ask for a second opinion you can always ask for a referral specifically to a nutritionist and you can express, you can say, you know, I would really like somebody who's informed in this. And I know sometimes that's easier said than done because uh, obviously we have limitations like, you know, insurance is a huge one, <laughs> money is a huge one. So I get that those can be difficult barriers, but just try to Try to find ways that you can get that information from multiple people if you feel like the information you're getting is not in line with what you're wanting. I think you, I think you know your own body, and I think sometimes we don't trust ourselves as, as much as we should when it comes to medical stuff. Um, so, you know, put in the effort to, to ask more questions and to ask for a second opinion or ask for a referral to someone who's gonna know more about that topic. And Allison, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. I don't wanna overstep. No, I appreciate it, Amanda. I was actually wondering, since I know you're no longer at UNM and um, you've been at home actively raising a baby, I'm not sure if you're taking on clients, but I know that you are certified in oncology nutrition. So I just, I didn't know if that was an option for anybody. Well, so yeah, so I am, I'm a certified health and cancer coach, but I'm not a board certified nutritionist, which I do just want to make the distinction there. Um, but I'm, I'm not taking on clients, but I might be soon. How about, how's that answer? <laughs> okay. No, that, so. that works. I just wanted, you know, to provide some direction if anybody um, had met you and felt comfortable with you and wanted to kind of pursue their individualized nutritional journey further. I totally appreciate that. And I will keep you informed on when I do start taking on clients. Yeah. And I also wanted to say, yes, please, if we could add another lecture, maybe in the latter part of the fall for fermented foods, okay. because we do get a lot of inquiries about that. Definitely. I can definitely do that. Yes. Um, I will just write myself a note and we can look at dates. There's like a whole world out there when it comes to fermented foods. And we're still, that's all pretty new in American culture, but it is not new in a lot of other cultures. Actually, I shouldn't say it's new in American culture. I would say it's renewed in American culture, actually. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you so much. This has just been so informative. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm so glad you were able to make it. All of you. Thank you so much for coming. So I know we have about five minutes left. I One last time, anybody, any questions, anything that you would like me to follow up on specifically that I could also bring up either in an email to 
Allison or in a later lecture other than fermented foods. I got that down. And I could also look more into the mushrooms thing. Can I ask just one last question? Mm -hmm, sure. Um, do you have expertise or, or Allison or anybody on mitigating the toxic effects of cancer treatment? So I will say a lot of what we covered today helps with that. Um, I know there are, there's definitely more you can do, um, but I will say a lot of what we talked about today and that helps fight cancer is also gonna help mitigate the negative effects of treatments. Um, that being said, I could go more into that at a later time too, Allison, if we wanna do that. All of these topics I think are so relevant and important, Amanda, and we absolutely always love having you and your knowledge and expertise. Um, I will piggyback on that just to say that, you know, in the years of being in the role that I've been in, <coughs> excuse me, I still have a little bit of the residual COVID there, but um, the things that sort of always come up are nutrition, hydration, and exercise. Um, and again, I mean, I know that's generic, but those are the things that we repeatedly hear for sort of eliminating the toxic effects of treatment. Yep, absolutely. And and just like you said, so hy hydration is huge. I will just say a couple of things about that um, before we run out of time, but hydration is huge, partly because of the eliminate, like it eliminates all those negative things, right? So just like we were talking about eliminating toxins, a main way to do that is to stay hydrated, right? Because if you're not hydrated, you're not eliminating stuff. Um, just like if you're not moving your body and if you're not eating healthy foods with fiber that help you el eliminate those toxins. Um, so hydration is very important and eating those whole plant-based foods, eating whole fruit, whole veggies, eating things that naturally have a lot of liquid in them and a lot of juice in them that's good for you that does and just water in general like fruit has a high level of water things like celery that for a while were thought of being like not really nutritionally valuable actually are really high in water and fiber and those are two key things in being able to eliminate all of that negative stuff from your body so that definitely all ties in to your diet and then moving yeah because anything you can do to move um walking rebounding actually, which is like jumping on a, a trampoline. Um, one of the things that I was trained in was that rebounding, like on a, a personal exercise trampoline, um, or you can go to trampoline parks these days. There's a bunch of them. Uh, just, you know, wear a mask if you're, if you're being, if you're concerned about getting exposure to anything. Right. Um, that is actually really help, helpful for your immune system. It really boosts your immune system and it's an easy form of exercise. So it, it's not as hard on your joints as like running, um, but you're still moving your body and go, I mean, go jump on a trampoline for 30 minutes. You're going to feel winded <laughs> and you don't have to do 30 minutes, but I just mean as an, as an example. So, you know, anything you can do to get yourself moving is super helpful for your body being able to process and push out any of the negative stuff that it doesn't need all those toxins. I think we're right at eight. So I, I really want to just last, like, thank everybody again for coming. I hope you got something great out of it. Um, at least something you didn't know before. You know, I look forward to doing more of these. So thank you so much, Allison, for having me. Pink Warrior House Foundation. Awesome, always. Thank you, Amanda. It is always such a pleasure to have you. And thank you for sharing your time and talents with us. And we'll look forward to having you back in the fall. Oh, I do see one hand up. Sheila, did you want to say one last thing? Oh, um, I was trying to clap, but thank you so much. Oh. All your information was so useful. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Allison. Thanks again, Amanda. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Good night, everybody. Get some rest. Good night, everyone. Thank you.